welcome to another scavenge lord video now today I'm going to show you among some other things the street on which I live because today is trash day and we're going to give a very brief demonstration of how I scavenge beginning with my own trash can I like to get out fairly early in the morning and in the winter time that means before dawn. I have to do that in order to beat the trash truck. So I carry a flashlight with me and even though it's slightly after dawn now I will show you that in the dark this is a very handy thing to have. Now, you place your flashlight inside the trash can when you need to see inside so that way it's not bugging the neighbors shining beams out here inside the trash can just like you would inside a dumpster to look inside and wave that around now most trash can bags these days are white which actually helps quite a lot because you can see inside of them and get a fairly nice idea of what's there and if you can't tell I simply press my hand over them and I can feel that this is mostly uh, wrappings and a couple of bottles. This is kitchen trash. But if I wanted to get a better idea, I would peek inside, or if it was already tied shut, I could actually, well, I've never tried to do this while holding a camera, but the bags can be ripped rather easily. I take a peek inside, I see that there's nothing that's going to be useful for me. So I leave it, leave it. And then I always replace the lid in order to keep out the raccoons or whoever else might be around. I actually usually leave my neighborhood cleaner than when I find it when I go out on these scavenging trips. Now let's look at my neighbor's trash right here. Now I'm about to cross the road so I look both ways and oh I'm about to be run over. So I wait until it's safe to cross, and I step aside. Now, this side of the street has no sidewalk on it, and I'm going to be wary of that fact, not only because I like not being run over, but also because not everyone brings their trash cans all the way out to the curb. If a trash can is within reaching distance of the curb, I can be standing in the street and I'm not trespassing on anyone's lawn. So that gives people much, much, much less reason, or excuse me, less excuse to complain about what I'm doing. Now, I open up the trash can, I peek at the different bags inside, and I don't know if this shows up on camera well, but these bags are actually very transparent because they're stretched thin, and I see there is absolutely nothing in here that I need. So I replace the lid, and I move on to the next can, just that quickly. Next can, I look inside, one bag filled with nothing but pla more plastic. Boy, that should have been recycled move over here and now this is what we're looking for a shoe box sometimes these have shoes in them so I open the shoe box and yes lo and behold if you didn't guess yeah I already scouted this trash can but this is uh, not that I find something interesting in every trash can maybe one in every 10 one in every 20 this pair of shoes right here is already covered with a lot of paint. Somebody was painting his house or something while wearing a pair of old tennis shoes and threw them out when he was done. But the, the, the soles are in mediocre shape. Um, shoelaces are still really good. This is a pair of shoes. It's a pair of large men's shoes, size 11 wide. That could still be useful. I could see somebody paying a dollar at a thrift store for these. So I'm going to pick them up and I'm going to carry them to the Goodwill. 
because I'm explaining what I'm doing, this actually takes a lot longer than usual. I would have had this done within 10 seconds. I look in the rest of the trash can. John Hoffman says, when you find a dumpster that has a lot of interesting materials in it, that means that it's hot, like a slot machine, and you want to keep using it. Now, notice something that's happening here. There's a lot of room left inside this trash can. And in my particular subdivision, the Homeowners Association has a rule that trash cans are, are for trash. You're not supposed to put out a bag without a covered can. So I'm going to move the neighbors trash into this trash can where there's room place the lid on it that way my neighbor doesn't get fined so I don't want anybody to get in trouble and this I'm going to carry with me until I get back to my place and you will see this in a loot video coming up soon now this is an example of a trash can which is about three feet off of the curb. Now this is a guy who probably does not want me picking through his trash uh, to the point where he's going to make the garbage man take an extra two steps. Well, if he feels that strongly about it, then uh, all right, I'll leave your trash can alone. Now this is an example of some stuff that I cannot use. We've got some linoleum flooring, some old carpeting, but uh, the carpet is shag, not loop, so uh, it's not the best stuff for making cat trees and cat toys. This insulation, this stuff can be recycled actually. Uh, back when I lived in Kentucky, I knew of a place or two that would actually pay for rolls of padding like this. That they could tear apart and reuse. But I don't know of any here in Florida, and there's certainly none near me. So this is an example of the sort of thing that I just going to have to walk past. Now this is what we like to see, boxes. When there are boxes stacked outside of the trash can, that's often a good indication. Now I just turned on my camera because I began peeking in this little collection of cans and bags and this looked like a promising start. Right here we have a shoe box, and this shoe box is empty. However, next to it, that is a woman's belt. Very good condition. Partly real leather. All right, we will keep that. What else do we have in here? We have a second belt in still good condition. It feels like something cloth down here. Yep, uh, a shirt, medium sized. It's, ooh, one of those ugly sweater shirts. Okay. And another belt down here. All right, we will keep those. What's in this book? College Algebra Essentials. It's a three book binder. And this is the sort of thing that I would keep if I had like a den with a lot of shelf space because I do like reference materials, but um, nobody's going to buy this out of a thrift shop. So the book I will leave behind. Hello, pooch. Okay. Uh, the sun is out. We've got some fairly good lighting now. Let's do some scavenging in real time. This corner, I see a bag there. Bag there. I'm not interested in either of those. I walk past this trash can. Peek inside. Not interested in that. Uh, turn this over. Nope. These guys are up on the driveway. I'm not going to touch that. Here we have a box with some, I already have so many dried flowers at home. And 
Those look like they're mostly thorns anyway. I'm gonna leave that alone. This bag feels unproductive. I'm moving on. These bags look, actually these look like some critter got into them last night. I'm actually going to stop and I'm going to clean up my neighbor's yard a little bit. There, I needed both hands to pick up that letter, but now it's stuffed inside the trash can and it might make it into the back of the garbage truck now. Looks slightly better. Moving on. And I'm looking in this can. And nope. Not the sort of can that interests us. And in this can, nope, not the sort of can that interests us. Moving along. This is a air filter. I'll bring these home sometimes if it's in better condition than the one that I'm currently using. And it's not. This bag. Feels like it's got a lot of plastic and kitchen garbage in it. Possibly diapers. This bag. Oh, hello. Got a small little durable shopping bag here. That's going to be good for carrying off other items. I'm going to keep the shopping bag. And the rest, I leave. Now at the moment, I have a backpack full of clothing. Now, there were a couple of nice boxes, uh, one laundry basket that I could grab and carry around in order to keep pursuing on this street, or I could do what is called creating a catch. And I've done that before. If I'm loaded down with too many materials and I'm racing against the garbage truck, I'll find some out of the way spot where for half an hour or so I can stuff some materials and come back for them later. John Hoffman recommends using culverts as good places to create caches. But honestly, any bush pushed up against the side of a building will do. All you need is a spot where the garbage truck isn't the guy from the garbage truck is not going to grab it, mistaking it for trashy trash, and throw it into the back of his truck, and where it's not going to be an eyesore to anyone else. Now I walked up to this trash can and these bags, and I saw a towel sticking out the top of it, so I pulled at the towel and I saw another towel underneath. And it looks like there's a lot of fabrics in that particular bag, so I'm going to do what John Hoffman recommends. I'm going to take the entire bag with me and sort through it later. So here I am, walking down the street, carrying an entire bag, which might be full of mostly trashy trash, but that's all right, because there's going to be at least one towel in it that's probably usable and I am beating the garbage truck. Here it comes now. And now it's a race. Now this is interesting. I came across a large pile of boxes which usually means that somebody is moving and that's uh, very encouraging. That's downright exciting. So I walked up to it and I looked in the top box found a pair of socks with a lot of holes in them, no good, but underneath, see a pair of eyeglasses, some shirts. Um, looks like there's probably a good amount of clothes in here and an old checkbook, which I am not keeping. So I'm going to do something unusual here with the garbage truck breathing down my neck. I am going to leave behind that bag of towels and I'm going to carry off this box instead. And while I'm here, 
That's a school bus you hear behind, passing behind me. I'm going to grab these. Uh, no, I'm not. Those are not in good shape. Okay, I'm going to grab just the box. I'm going to leave behind the towels. And I'll be off. Can't grab this with one hand, so I'm going to have to turn off the camera. I'm so sorry. I know you're very disappointed. The time is now 7.30 in the morning, and I've been at this for an hour and a half, and this is my catch. Uh, these are the items that I've gathered so far today, and I stuffed them right outside my own front door, where they're enough out of sight that they're not going to bother anyone, and even though it's still very early and I have a lot more garbage cans to check, I'm going to quit now. Part of the reason is that my camera battery is almost depleted. But another even more important reason is that I have work. Unfortunately, I do have a job and I'm going to have to clock in uh, late this morning. And I'm going on only two hours of sleep here. So I'm going to do the adult thing, and I'm going to let the garbage truck win a few rounds. And this morning, and I will be back next week.